way. This is how we do it. So these cars on the left are actually making it difficult for the other cars to do the right thing. Each year, South Australian paramedics respond to over 250,000 emergencies. We've arrived this morning at a vehicle accident. A young girl has unfortunately rolled her car. A delay of just minutes can sometimes be the difference between life and death. In this case, uh, if this person's in cardiac arrest, like the job suggests, those few seconds can mean the difference about a successful resuscitation or not. But when paramedics receive the call for help, just getting to the scene can be fraught with danger. Cars just swerve out of the way. They go into intersections where it's probably too dangerous to do that. They stay there, they don't move for minutes, delaying our time to the scene and just making the job a lot more unsafe. It's frustrating when the left lane is clear and they can easily change lanes and we can go past, but sometimes people just don't know what to do and panic. We teach our paramedics always um, that to arrive is our main focus, so we want to drive uh, in a non-aggressive manner and get to our patients as fast as we can. Senior paramedic Amanda Cameron's now been on the road for over 20 years and says the problem's worse than ever. I think generally people don't intend to behave badly on the roads, but often inattention or lack of focus can mean that they're not aware of us coming up behind them. To experience the challenges they face just getting to the job, we hitched a ride in one of the fleet's sprint cars. The sprint vehicles have been designed to be able to manoeuvre their way through traffic uh, a lot faster and more easily than a traditional ambulance. We followed as they responded to real life emergencies. They've actually diverted us. To a vehicle accident. And we discovered Adelaide drivers have a lot to learn because when the lights start flashing and the sirens are blaring, some drivers just don't get it. We had to hit the brakes at this Kilkenny intersection when this red car snuck through and another in Rosewater. It's really difficult. Um, we're approaching peak hour at the moment. So just goes right and this guy, yeah, now he's stopped. He just took a minute to let me know that he was going to, so I couldn't proceed into the intersection until I knew he was definitely going to stop. But it was in the city on the way to a crash in West Croydon that one pedestrian nearly became a patient themselves. This must be frustrating. Yes, for a pedestrian to just walk out in front of us. We do everything we can to mitigate all the risks, but when they walk out in front of us and we're responding to emergencies, they are taking a risk. At the scene, they were confronted with this nasty crash. A 25-year-old woman had been pulled from a car that flipped when it smashed into the median strip. Now, you're first on scene. I mean, yes. you don't know what to expect. How crucial is timing in an accident like this? Uh, when you hear that you've got a vehicle rollover, you know that the potential for significant injury is fairly high, so uh, you want to arrive on scene as quickly as possible. Uh, if there are life-threatening injuries, every minute can count. The young woman survived, amazingly suffering just minor injuries. While our sprint car struggled to manoeuvre the Adelaide streets, it was even harder in a full-sized ambulance. It becomes more frustrating when you know that you know, these, these minutes save lives. Andy Hillier has been working as a paramedic in Adelaide for 16 years and says the roads are growing more and more congested. I think generally we found that you know, there's more traffic on the roads nowadays and with that congested traffic it makes our job a little bit harder because for example rush hour is extending, it's not just an hour of the day now from you know, half past three in the afternoon through to about six o'clock. During the afternoon rush hour drivers were more interested in getting home than getting out of the way. This was Croydon Park. Actually indicating, then they've stopped indicating. Yeah, so what do you, right, do you think so, he's just panicked or? No, he wanted to make his turn. He didn't want to make his turn, so he didn't want to go over that side of the road and then have to try and get back to that way. The same obstacles in Prospect 2. Yeah. So look at that, like, cross right in front of you. Yeah. Even though they could see you approaching. They could. And so we're, we're head on with them, so they could see. But because they had the green light. And then yet another pedestrian making a quick dash, hoping the driver is looking after them. They got a pedestrian going right across. Yeah. So for them, it seems like they had a lot of space, but I can't go into that space until obviously the road is clear. And we even encountered a bus driver who you'd hope might know better blocking the way. 
Do you think he just can't hear? Well, he should be able to see in his mirrors. You know, so he's moved into our path, which now causes us then to make a different manoeuvre. But we want to go the same way he does, so. So what can you do to help paramedics get on with saving lives? Well, according to these guys, it's pretty simple. So as soon as they see us, they should try and make efforts to move out the path of the emergency vehicle as soon as they can do so safely. Not wait for us to get right up behind them and then try and move. The faster someone can get there, the faster they can initiate treatment and potentially save a life.